Hey everybody, Johnny here. In this video, we're going to take cloth simulations and add detail to them later using geometry nodes. This is going to give us the ability to add detail that isn't deformed by the cloth modifier directly, but just follows the shape of the pillow we create afterwards. So let's jump right in. The first thing we'll want to do is to create a pillow using cloth simulation. This has been covered a lot in some other videos by other YouTubers, so I'm going to run through it really quickly. To start, we'll just use a cube, and in edit mode we're going to shrink it down on the z-axis, add in some loop cuts in the x and y direction, and then add a loop cut in the z direction. Next, we'll add a cloth simulation to it, we'll increase the quality steps, Scroll down and enable pressure and set the pressure to 1 to start with. Scroll down again, go to field weights and turn off gravity. At this point, if we play our animation, our pillow will inflate. Going back into edit mode, with all my vertices selected, I'm going to press Ctrl V for the vertex menu and choose Smooth Vertices. I want to smooth them a little more, so I'll just press Shift-R to repeat my last command. Now if I play the animation, I get slightly softer corners, and that's what I'm looking for. As I was working on this tutorial, I found that I was doing these steps to create a cloth simulation on a cube a lot of times, and so I wanted to make it a little quicker. So I wrote a short add-on, which allows me to add a cube just like before, and then with that cube selected, I can search for Quick Pillow. The Quick Pillow add-on adds the cloth simulation and then a subsequent subdivision surface modifier. It sets up the pressure at 1 and turns off the gravity. However, it also has this properties pop-up window, and so the settings can be changed on the fly. So if I want more pressure, I can simply add it here. I can increase my quality steps use gravity, collisions, and self-collisions all within this menu. And then that will change the modifiers that are generated. So this new object is immediately ready to go. If you're interested in this add-on, it's available via my Patreon. I'll put the link in the description. I'll remove this one for now and go back to the one we started with. You can of course change any of the cloth settings that you'd like to get the effect that you're going for. For now, this is going to be good enough for what we're doing today. We want to have a way of taking part of this pillow and then using it with geometry nodes later. In this case, I just want to add a line of piping around the seam of the pillow. So if I go into edit mode and alt click on my seam, I'm going to assign this to a new vertex group. I could go to the mesh menu, click on add group, and then assign these vertices. Although another way to do this is with the loop selected, press Ctrl G. Selecting this option will create the group and assign the selected vertices in one step. Now that we have some vertices selected, let's jump over to geometry nodes and see how we can use them. What we want to do is get rid of everything except the vertices that we've selected. So to do that, we'll use a delete geometry node. And we'll have to pass it the selection that we want to delete. We can get the information from the vertex group by dragging a new link from the group input to our selection. Then over in our modifier panel, we can press this button, which is the input attribute toggle. By pressing this, instead of giving a static value like one, we can drive this value using an attribute. In this case, we want the vertex group named group. As you can see, we've selected that and we've deleted the seam that we were trying to keep. So we need to invert this selection. Since this is being interpreted as a boolean, because I connected an empty socket to a boolean socket, I can simply invert this using a boolean math node and setting it to not. Now that I have this mesh isolated, I can do with it whatever I need to do. However, we may want to generalize this a little bit. We can do that by cutting off this selection here and adding an input named attribute node. The attribute is a float because it's coming from a vertex group, and we'll plug this into our boolean. Now we can plug in this name from our input, and we can get rid of our original selection socket. Now we can name this 
Extract Vertex Group Mesh, and I'll mark that as an asset. Now I'll remove it from this node tree. I'll create a new node tree, and then I'll add that node group back in. So now anytime I want to extract a vertex group from a mesh, I can simply use one of these nodes and give it the name of the vertex group that's driving it. Now that we have this mesh, we want to turn it into a tube. Of course, we can't do that directly to a mesh, so instead we'll want to convert it to a curve first. We'll use a mesh to curve node, followed by a curve to mesh node. And then for the profile curve, we'll use a curve primitive circle. We'll reduce the resolution down and reduce the radius and plug this into our profile curve. Because taking a mesh line like this and converting it to a curve and then back to a mesh is something we might want to do again, we'll go ahead and group these two nodes. And we'll call this group Solidify Mesh Line. So now anytime I have a mesh and I want to convert it to a curve and then back to a mesh, I can do that with just one node instead of a couple. Now that I have my solidified line, I'm going to recombine this with my original mesh. I'll give it a material and set it to Shade Smooth. Of course, if I wanted a separate material for the piping, I could simply add a Material Set Material node and place it here on the line of the piping. The beauty of this method is that it stays fully dynamic. Rather than running the simulation and then adding it to a static mesh afterwards, this will let me scrub through my animation until I get the frame that I want, and the piping will keep up the whole time. Of course, if I wanted to then add a subdivision surface node, I could do that just to smooth the whole thing out. So let's do this one more time with something a little more complicated. Since I like where this pillow is, I'm going to go to my modifier tab and apply all of these modifiers. And so now I have a static pillow mesh here. So we'll start again with a new mesh. This time I'll use a circle. And for sake of time, I'll use my quick pillow add-on. And let's play and see what we've got. That looks pretty good, although I want more of a seam around the middle. For this one, we're going to create stitches along the seam. First, we're going to add in the geometry nodes tree we had before. But now we want to add loops around the seam that look like stitches. To do that, we're going to instance curved circles all the way around this loop. So I'm going to get rid of this solidify mesh node and add an instance on points node. What I want to instance are some curved primitive circles. While that's a neat pattern, it's not what we're going for. We'll want to align these circles so they line up with the mesh ring that we extracted. We want to align them to a tangent at each point along that ring. However, currently, this geometry is a mesh, and meshes don't have a tangent like the curves do. So we'll need to convert this into a curve first. We'll use a mesh to curve node to do that. Now that we have that, we can bring in our tangent node. The tangent is a vector at each point of the curve that points in the direction the curve is pointing at that given point. We don't want a vector, we want a rotation. So to convert a vector into a rotation, we're going to need to use an Align Euler to Vector node. The vector we want to align to is our tangent, and our rotation will get plugged into rotation. You'll see they moved a little bit, but they didn't do what we wanted. That's because we need to specify which axis of our circles need to be aligned to the tangent. Since our circles are laying flat on the XY plane and the center line runs along the Z, we're going to want to align the Z of our circle to the tangent. Now that we do that, it looks like we've given our pillow earrings. But this is exactly the direction we need to go in. Now that we have these rings, we can go ahead and solidify them. We'll use a curve to mesh node, 
and a curved circle as our profile. So let's plug in our curve to our profile curve. We'll need to reduce the radius. And because these are just going to be small stitches, our resolution doesn't need to be anywhere near 32. Let's go with 6. Similarly, the circle that's around the outside doesn't need to be 32 either. Let's bring that one down to 12. So now that we have these two things, we can see that this radius affects the size of our stitches and this radius affects the width of each stitch. So we can bring those two values to our input. We'll call this first one stitch size and then we'll connect the next one and call this one thread width. Now, we will want to cinch these stitches in a little bit and we can do that by adjusting our original mesh that we extracted. If we use a geometry set position node on that original mesh, we can use the normal from each of those points before we extracted them to direct the points inward. So if we simply capture an attribute before we extract the mesh, the attribute we want to capture is the normal. We'll change this type to vector since the normal is a vector. And then we'll use this attribute to drive the offset of the points on that mesh loop that we extracted. Now because a normal is a unit vector, all of these rings have been pushed out one unit away from their original position, in the direction of their normal. So we want to change the magnitude of that normal to be slightly less than zero. That way, it pulls them inward instead of outward. We can do that using a vector math node and set it to scale. As we bring the scale down, the rings will come closer to their original positions. When the scale reaches zero, they'll be back to where they were at the start. And if we go slightly below zero, you can now see that the center points of the rings are now inside where they were before instead of outside. Now, if we want to have more points, we can simply resample this curve before we instance on it. So we'll use a resample curve node before our instance on points and then increase the count. Now that we have these stitches, we may want to rotate them just slightly so that they're at an angle. There's a bunch of different ways we could accomplish this. However, one of the easiest might be is just to add a little bit of extra rotation after we've lined the circles up with the tangent. That was right here in our node tree. So if we use the rotate Euler node, we can use this to add additional rotation to our current rotation. So we can simply play with this until we get the effect we're looking for. Of course, this just scratches the surface with the types of things you could do. And I'm sure you can come up with a lot more creative ways to use this than I've done here. But anyway, this at least gives you an idea of the types of things you can do by combining the cloth modifier with a geometry node tree. If you'd like this source file, it is available via my Patreon, as well as the quick pillow add-on that I mentioned earlier. I'll put a link to my Patreon in the description. Make sure to visit my Gumroad page. There's a lot of pay what you want assets there, so you can go grab those as well. And I definitely want to send a shout out to my Patreon supporters. I really appreciate you all. Your support is a great encouragement to keep this content going. Anyhow, I hope you got something useful out of this. Even if this is something you've tried before, I hope you learned something along the way. As always, I hope this inspires you to make something awesome. And until next time, I'll catch you later.